Minecraft 1.21.4 is here, and with it come a whole host of customization options for custom item models, which is really cool. Now this tutorial aims to show you exactly how to set up your resource pack with these new item models, and if you had old item models, then stick around till the end, where I'll show you an easy way to update those. Let's jump in, shall we? Now to get things started, we of course need a resource pack. And if you already have a resource pack, that's brilliant. You can use that and follow along with the tutorial just fine. If you don't have a resource pack yet and you're just getting started with that, well, I have on my Patreon for free a template, a resource pack template that you can use. Of course, there'll be a link in the description. <laughs> Once you have your resource pack, whether you've downloaded the template for my Patreon or you've got your own, you wanna make sure that you can access it in Minecraft. And the way that we get there is by hitting escape and going to options into resource packs. You can see I have a lot of them over here. You wanna click here to open your pack folder and then just drag and drop that pack, your resource pack into the window that pops up. And after a little bit, and you might have to scroll a little bit, you can see over here it shows up. This is my template resource pack here. You're going to click the arrow to move it over here. And then you want to click done and it's going to reload. Brilliant. Of course, it doesn't do anything yet. And so you want to open it in whatever software you like to use to edit your resource pack. For me, that is VS Code. However, if you want to use your own file browser and text edit, then that of course also works just fine. And here we are in VS Code. For those of you who don't know it, or if you're following along and you're not using this, over here on the left is our folder structure. So this is our resource pack folder. And in it, if you open it, you can see there's the assets folder and a pack.mc meta. From there, I'll be accessing the files that we're using. But of course, you can also still do it in your own file browser. But of course, it's going to look a little different. From here, you want to open the assets folder. And in my own template, you can see I've got items models and textures. I've got all these folders set up here. If you're using the template, you'll notice that the items folder is empty. The models folder will have an item folder inside and the same goes for the textures folder. If you don't have that set up in your own resource pack yet, this is a good time to do it because we're going to need all three of them. And this is where we come across those changes for Minecraft 1.21.4. You see, it used to be enough to just drop your item model file into model slash item in that folder, and then your texture in texture slash item, but that's not enough anymore. You see, there is an extra file your model needs, and this file is really cool because it allows for all that customization that's new. But before we get to the customization, let's first import our custom model. And so what you want to do, you want to drag your custom model file into the models item folder. There we go. Now, once you've got that model in, what you want to do is drag in the textures into the textures item folder. There you go, just like this. Now, once you have your custom model in models item and you have your texture in textures item, we need to create a third file here in the items folder, which you know is kind of confusing, but we need to have a new file here. Now, that's the file that's going to allow for all the customization I was talking about. Now, it's really tricky to set up that file, and so luckily, there is our good friend Misode who has a really nice generator for it. And the link for that, of course, is in the description. <laughs> Welcome to Misode. Here we have a lot of generators for a lot of really cool stuff, but we want to look for the item generator. Is it here somewhere? I'm scrolling. If you can't find it at the top, you can just uh, type it in item. There you go. This is the one that we need. Items, slash items, it will say right over here. Click it. It will open this. And um, it will start you off with bundle selected item. Well, the, we don't want that really right now. If you click on it, you see we have a lot of options and I'll go in a little more detail about it later on. But for now, for our cap, we just want a regular model. And so we click model. Our cap model will not be doing anything too special aside from just being the cap. And so we don't really need to select any of the special things for now. And then here in the model field, we want to type out the path to our custom model that we just put into our resource pack. And it starts with our namespace. So for us, that is template, but of course for you, it may be different. And then a colon again, and then we want to type item slash cap. Now the model field over here is always going to go looking for things in the models folder. And so we don't actually need to include it here. We can just put item slash cap. And that is our file. Now you can see here in the lower right corner, it has generated some text for us. And this is actually the file that we need. We can click download and we're going to drag that into our items folder. Apparently it will be saved as draft.json. We don't really need to call it that. We want to rename this to, in my case, cap, because of course I want to have my cap. 
Now, this is technically it for adding custom item models in 1.21.4. This should technically work. Let's go test this in game, shall we? So we want to type the give command and I'm just going to type myself because I want to give it to myself right now. And then I need an item. I'm just going to go for a stick because why not? I need something random. And we're going to add item model. This needs to be in quotation marks and we're going to say template cap. The item model component is always going to go looking for models in the items folder. Now, once we filled this out correctly, we can hit enter and see that it doesn't work. Now there's a pretty good reason it doesn't work and that's simply because we haven't reloaded all the textures. So we want to hit F3 and T on our keyboards. It will show the Mojang logo. And there we go. There is our cap in our hands. Now this is a little outside the scope of this tutorial, but if you want to be able to wear that, you can simply type in something like this, equipable on the slot head. Hit enter. Now we've got another one. And this we can put in our heads. That's cool. Now we can wear our cap. Now congratulations, if everything went well, you should have added your own custom item model into Minecraft, which is great. But um, where's all the customization that I was talking about earlier? <laughs> now I'm here on the Minecraft.net website and I'm looking at the change log for Minecraft Java Edition 1.21.4. Now if we scroll down a whole bunch over here where it says item models, you can see over here it's just talking about the things that I just showed you. But over here, you can find the different model types. Now, do you remember over here in Mesod, we selected model as the model type, and this will just render a normal model. But as you can see, there are many more options over here. And with all of those options, you can do so many things that I simply cannot really show in one video, unfortunately. Now, if you're really invested in this and you want to know everything that you can do with item model types, then I recommend you go to the change log and just read through it. For this tutorial, what I want to do is just show you one example and hopefully that will give you enough context for figuring out the rest. And remember, Mesoad and the tool that I showed you is your friend. So let's go over there again and see how we can make something cool happen. Now, if you've seen any of my other tutorials, you know that I like goat horns and giving them functionality. Now, something interesting about the goat horn is it actually has two different item models. There's this one where you're not using it. And then there's this one when you are using it. Technically, this is a different item model that you're seeing right here. And so I'd like to recreate that with the custom model of a banjo. So here in Mesoad, we can get rid of this. And for the model, we want to select condition. For the property, we want to set using item because of course we want this to change when we're using the item. We want to click on on true and when it is true, we want, what do we want? We want a regular model. And so you may already get the sense of what we're actually doing here. We're kind of nesting models into these conditions over here. So for the model, we want to select template playing banjo. So when we're using it, the model we want to display is the banjo that's playing. And then we want to click on on false. Then we also want a model and we kind of want the same thing as here. So I'm just going to copy and paste it. Only I'm going to remove the playing part. So when we are using it, we want the playing banjo model. When we're not using it, we want the banjo model. Now, before we go and download this, I'm realizing that I made a tiny little mistake. You're supposed to have item slash in front of that one. And of course, also in front of that one. There we go. Now we can download it and put this in our resource pack. And so for reference here in our resource pack, I've put the banjo.json item file. This is the one that we just generated in Mesoad. Here in models and item, I have put the banjo and playing banjo models. And of course, the texture I've put here in textures, which means that after we've reloaded the textures and we give ourselves a goat horn with the banjo model on it, we should get a goat horn that when we play it, it switches to a different model, which I'm realizing is not super obvious here, is it? So to visualize a little bit better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the playing banjo to cap. And then of course, reload the resource pack and you should see that this now changes to the cap when I play it. It's the same item. It's the same go to and only it renders differently. Now, of course, I recognize that this is a little bit of a weird example, but this does illustrate just the craziness of things that you can do with these new item models. It's really, really cool. With all of these options, the possibilities truly seem endless. I mean, you can change the model of an item depending on what key somebody's holding down. Now, this one is probably the coolest. It allows you to set the model depending on the time that 
someone's computer is set to. This is how they do the Christmas chests at Christmas. And just a little bit above that, there is display context, which makes it render a different item depending on where it is, if it's in your inventory or in your hand. An example of this is the spyglass, which of course has a flat texture over here, but when you hold it in your hand, it is actually 3D. You can see that, right? Now, as you can see, there truly is a lot that's possible with this. And I hope with this tutorial, I've been able to get you on your way. But don't go just yet. Of course, I promised I would also show you how to upgrade your other models, your older models, if you had those. Whoosh. How you update your models kind of depends on how you had your models. There are two options here. Either you were already using the item model component, in which case all you need to do is add that JSON file that we generated in Mesoed into your items folder. And if you have a model that you don't need to do anything special for, then it's really just as simple as adding a file with this. Of course, changing this to the model that you have, but I think that speaks for itself. The other option is that you use custom model data, like I did with this pumpkin over here. Here. Now the way that custom model data used to work is you'd very simply give it a number like this. But as you can see, it's red, it doesn't work anymore. Right now, custom model data can accept all sorts of data, floats, flags, strings, and colors. And no, I totally just didn't look that up real quick on the, on the page. The point is, if you want to have custom model data and you want it to function the way that it did before, you need to do it like this. You need to say that it's a float and then you put your number in here. So this carved pumpkin over here, it has the data still, the old custom model data. If I type in this command over here, it will get me the data from my inventory. And you can see that I'm holding a carved pumpkin. And for the custom model data, it doesn't just have that number anymore. It's been upgraded to the new format. Now, this also means that you would have to upgrade your resource pack. Now, I really do not recommend you use custom model data anymore. The new system is so much more flexible. However, if for some reason you're still stuck on the custom model data system, then let me show you how to upgrade your files and your resource packs. What we've got over here is still the exact same resource pack that we've been working on this entire tutorial. However, I've added this Minecraft namespace with the models item folder in and inside here is the model for the carved pumpkin. Now this file over here has an override and it's got an override for custom model data. And if it's one, then it will show the cap, except for this is of course the old method of doing it. This won't work anymore. As of Minecraft 1.21.4, these files, these files over here, they don't accept overrides anymore. And so this is not possible anymore. Luckily, Zenith Knight, and I hope I pronounced that correctly, has a very convenient tool that will convert it for us. It will be linked in the description. What you want to do here is select all of it and then copy it. Then you want to go to the custom model data converter. This is, of course, that tool that I was talking about. And over here, you can see a whole bunch of fields. Let's start with this one. This field, this is where you want to put the path to the original item. So in our case, that is Minecraft colon item slash carved pumpkin. Then here in the input JSON, there is already a bunch of stuff here. We don't need that. We can just get rid of it and then paste in the file that we copied earlier. Then if we scroll down a little bit, we can hit the convert button over here and you can see it will convert this into the new model format. You can see we've got model, we've got a type, which is using range dispatch. And then here for entries, it's of course putting in our cap and the number for it at threshold is number one. Now this tool does seem to have a little bit of an issue where it doesn't quite respect namespaces. I will show you what I mean. Over here for our model, we can see that we have the cap and it's in the template namespace, but it's also put the Minecraft namespace here and that's not very good, but we'll fix this in a second. For now, what we want to do is select all of this and then copy it. And now here in our resource pack, we want to go to the Minecraft folder. We want to create a new folder. This will be the items folder that we've talked about earlier, right? We've also created this one in the template. This is where the items go. And inside this new items folder that we've created, we want to create a new file that we want to name to the item that we were using, which is carved pumpkin. JSON, also very important. And then here in this file, we want to paste this in. And you can see it's giving us an error over here which we can resolve by simply removing this. There you go. Now, if we save this and we refresh our resources in Minecraft, we should see, yes, there we go. My cap is back to normal again. And to be clear, I didn't change anything about the carved pumpkin up here. 
Minecraft automatically upgraded it to have that float and all I did was I added a new file in the resource pack. That being said, if you're here in the resource pack and we go back to the old file that we were using for overrides for custom model data, we don't need this anymore. While there is no real problem leaving this in, it's absolutely fine. Minecraft will just ignore it. It's a little bit neater to just get rid of it altogether. And of course, after reloading our resources, you can see that it still works fine. And so this is how you can implement your custom item models into Minecraft 1.21.4 and how you can upgrade your old ones if you had those. I hope that you've enjoyed. I hope that I've been able to help a little bit and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.